And so I want to just share very briefly with you a, a parable of Jesus. And this parable comes from Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 6. So listen to the word of God as it comes to us in this story. Then Jesus said, imagine what would happen if you went to a friend in the middle of the night and said, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. An old friend traveling just showed up and I don't have a thing on hand. And the friend answers from his bed, don't bother me. The door is locked, my children are all down for the night and I can't get up to give you anything. But let me tell you, even if he won't get up because he's a friend, if you stand your ground knocking and waking all the neighbors, he'll finally get up and get you whatever you need. Here's what I'm saying. Ask and you'll get. Seek, and you'll find. Knock, and the door will open. Well, there could be lots of reasons that someone would come to another person, a friend, in the middle of the night, knocking on the door, hoping to get some help. I think we just heard some of those voices on this video, very powerful voice. With all the kinds of situations and far more that we can think of as to why someone would get up and ask a friend to have some bread, something to eat. And certainly it comes to mind uh, the, the senior citizens that receive the help that you give or the people who have jobs but have to work one, two, maybe even three jobs in order to feed their families. Or maybe it's the people who have lost their jobs and are wondering where, what will happen to them next, or they've lost their health, and then they don't know what they're going to do, and they lose all that they have, maybe their home, maybe uh, all hope for future jobs. And so, you know, all of those children, all of the children who come to us in need. I was in a very wealthy suburb this morning, at least one would assume it was a wealthy suburb, and an incredible percentage of the children receive help every day for lunch. All over our, our Chicagoland area, there are people in need. And I think you'd have to be desperate. I think you'd have to really understand that need to go knocking on someone's door at midnight. What would make you go? What would make you go and ask someone, even a friend? So the, the friend, he, he at first doesn't, doesn't uh, answer the door, but think about what this person's asking of him. He's asking, I don't know exactly how you loan three loaves. You either take loaves and eat them, or like I don't get that part. I think you're a, you're a New Testament scholar, aren't you? you? You just have to explain that part to me later, how you loan loaves. You know, you give me a loaf, I'm hungry, I'm going to eat the thing. So um, he asked for three loaves. Now, it's always my experience that in the scriptures, when there's some kind of specificity to it, you should pay attention. He asked for three loaves. And the specificity of it suggests that, in fact, that is a day's worth of food for the person that he's getting that food from. A whole day's worth. He's not just asking for a few crumbs. He's not just asking for some crusts, some leftovers, whatever you have in the fridge yet today. In fact, he's asking for everything, everything that is for the next day. Because after all, it is midnight. Well, there is a character in this story who does not appear. And this character, it seems to me, is very important. And for some of you, you won't be surprised to learn that undoubtedly it's a woman. <laughs> so there is this woman who, as you know, Proverbs says, uh, the, a, a good woman is going to provide for her family. And she will stay up late in order to provide food for her family. And that's exactly what women did. So after dark, they would begin to make bread for the next day. They would uh, do whatever it was they needed to do to get that dough ready to rise. And by midnight, perhaps she would be able to go to sleep. 
So presumably, there are three little loaves rising, waiting to be baked. Now, there is no GE oven in this house. <laughs> Furthermore, there is no personal uh, bread oven in this house. So there is a community bread oven that as soon as the first light of dawn comes, this woman is going to go to the community oven with their three loaves, only her husband has just given away the three loaves. So if she goes, she's got two problems. He had one problem. He had to give away his family's food. She now has two problems. She has no food to give her family for that day, and she is an embarrassment. You know, we talked, uh, the video talked a little bit about, you know, blaming the people who are in need. I think this invisible woman is, is going to be blamed for not being able to feed her family. That's what she exists to do. And here she comes empty-handed. And therefore, she needs to ask somebody for three loaves to feed her family. Someone comes, takes her family's bread for the day. Now she's got to go and ask somebody else to, to get bread for her family. You see how this poverty thing works? Are you getting this? Now, let's just put one little twist on this story right before this story. At the beginning of the chapter 11, Jesus' disciples say to him, teach us how to pray. And he does. And I'm figuring a whole bunch of you are biblical scholars at this point. You know what the prayer is. Give us this day our daily bread. Then, bam! This story. Somebody comes, asks you for your whole day's worth of bread. That causes the wife to have to go to the oven with no bread, ask for somebody else. There's this need upon need upon need. There's this asking upon asking upon asking, blaming the person who doesn't have the bread. It wasn't up to her as to what happened to it. And the whole thing just gets worse and worse. This from the man, Jesus, who said, you pray, give us this day our daily bread. He was the one that fed the 5,000. You remember that? Now, why in the world would those people be hungry? Okay, this is the traditional interpretation. I don't care if it's right or not. <laughs> They've been out listening to Jesus so long, they ran out of all their sandwiches. There was no food truck. So they were just hungry. This is baloney. I, well, no, I, baloney. If they had baloney, they would have had a sandwich. But in fact, these are people who are living in the bread basket of the empire. And these were hills they were on with, with fields of grain. And this was a lake filled with fish. And this story is about deep hunger, food insecurity, that persons on the side of the hill listened to Jesus. They had no bread. They had no fish. And the reason they had no bread and fish, it wasn't because they were lazy. It was because others were taxing them. Rome was taxing them. They were giving all that they could, not only to the, to the political empire, but also to support Jerusalem and all of its rituals. And so they had nothing. They were taxed to beyond being able to sustain their families. Here in the bread basket of the known world at the time, Jesus then gave them bread and fish. Give us this day our daily bread. So where does this story go? It's just crazy. Like if you really think through this story, it is crazy. One person's asking another person who puts the next person in need and there's still need and more need after that right here in the middle of the bread basket of the world. Where does this thing end? 
Well, it doesn't end with just doing mercy. The only way this story can end well is when people like us do justice. And we make a difference in the way in which people's lives are sustained by the very bread basket in which we live right here in uh, Illinois. And we make a difference in making sure that people have a livable wage. That we make a difference in making sure that people have jobs. That we make a difference in helping there to be a sustainable way for people to live their lives so there's no more needing. There's no more asking. But there's justice. And there's daily bread. So when you say that prayer, don't think it's just about mercy. That prayer is about justice. Mercy and justice coming together hand in hand, just like it does here in Just Harvest. Now there's one other little parable. There's this parable where the woman, she takes yeast and puts it in three measures of flour. I don't know what kind of Cuisinart she has. But if she had three measures of flour, she would be able to provide food for this entire room. So I, I just have this sense that a measure is like a lot. You know, it's an abundance. And it just takes a little bit to make that abundance feed the people around us. And so you know that phrase, that to each of us, we need to remember what has been given to us. And we need to be able to share that with others. The measure you give will be the measure you get. So this is the big ask of the night. This is the big ask for all of us. The big ask is to remember to do both mercy and justice in all of our churches and communities of faith. And the big ask is to remember that when we have something and our neighbor, our friend, the person in need comes to us, we give. We don't make the whole town wake up. We give because our hearts have received so much abundance from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and we in return want to give to others both mercy and justice. So somebody's going to come up here in a minute. She's coming. She's coming. And I want you to remember whatever she says. Just remember, the measure you give is the measure you get.